Um, a group of us had the unique opportunity in December to see this, and then these two walked into the room unexpectedly, and uh, here we are. Um, I, I went to the photo house the next day, and if any of you go to Israel and don't visit the photo house after seeing this film, you're missing something. Um, I have a picture at home from there. I know some of you have some pictures, but uh, I wanted to just take the opportunity to uh, learn a little bit about the film from these people, and we're going to open it up to your questions in a minute. I'm sure you're wondering uh, why Tamar made this film. What brought you to do this beautiful piece of work? So first of all, I would really like to thank Ellen and the amazing group that came to see the film in Tel Aviv. Uh, it's, uh, uh, we're very, very excited to be here. And uh, I really thank you for this amazing opportunity to show. I mean, it was really your vision to, to, to have us here with the show, I mean, with the film and the exhibition. So we're really excited. And this project actually started seven years ago when I was a student, photogra uh, student for photography. And I came to the shop uh, just to learn about the photos of Tel Aviv, the history. And when I came into the shop, I, I, I met Miriam and I just fell in love immediately. I fell in love with her and uh, with the photos in the shop. And uh, she was then um, very young, she was 92. And, uh, and I immediately thought that, wow, she, she'll be, I mean, this woman is amazing and she, a film must be, uh, must be made about her. And uh, I asked her if, uh, if I could make a short film about her. And her response was, uh, I'm, no, I'm too famous, no need to make a film about me, and no thanks. And I was very disappointed. And uh, when I was waving her for goodbye from the door, she asked me, so when do you start filming? <laughs> so, so this tells a lot about Miriam because she really liked to tease. And uh, I think I, I, she made a lot of auditions to, to test me if I'm serious, if I'm, if I'm uh, really going to do it. And um, through this period of time, we became very close friends. And so I made this short film about her. And when I was about, uh, the name of the film was The Iron Lady and the Photo House. And uh, when I finished the short film, uh, one of the times that I came to visit her, I saw this very cute guy sitting next to her and realizing this is her grandson. And the minute I understood the interaction is so special between them, I, I understood that I didn't finish anything right now. I'm only beginning. So this is how I really started Life in Stills. And it's been an amazing uh, period of time to, to be able to, to share those very intimate moments of uh, Miriam and Ben. They really opened the, their hearts to me and um, allowed me to, to be part uh, of their life. And uh, we, we became really like family by the end of it. So Ben, why did you, you and your grandmother agree to let Tamar and her camera into your lives so intimately? Well, um, it's a hard question, you know. Um, when I came to the shop, uh, it was already after Tamar was there filming her for, I think, two years. And uh, I, f I mean, I just came to visit. And she captured me and didn't let me go. She had a lot of complaints that I'm working in another place. And she really wanted me to stay there in the shop. Yeah. No, 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 I'm talking about Mia. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, she used to be so um, envy for me and uh, uh, didn't let anyone else come near me. And I remember when customers used to come and talk to me, she was uh, faking phone calls and saying, uh, I'm sorry, it's a call for America. Ben has to go now. He has to. <laughs> and everybody was nudniking for her. And uh, so I kind of uh, entered this atmosphere with her. And then. Um, I already saw Tamar's uh, short film, and I really liked it. And uh, then Tamar came to me one day, and she said, um, you know what? I feel that you and your grandma has a really special relationship, and I'm thinking about continuing this project. And for me, it was like um, the best uh, thing that she could say, because I was so honored that she even takes interest in my life, in her life, and she wants to, to make a film about my life. 
So immediately I said, yes, of course, I mean, uh, everything is uh, open. And of course, Miriam, you already saw in the film, she loved attention so much. So uh, I think that's the, the reason. So Ben, speaking of your grandmother, um, she kind of represents everyone's memories of their grandmothers uh, from Eastern Europe. You literally sit on her seat, in her seat, uh, on the bench of leaders, which I had the privilege of sitting on, yeah, actually with bench. you. Um, and by the way, you didn't see all the pictures, all of you, of Ben Gurion and Rabin and Sharon in their very younger days. They're very, very special, and they're all there in the shop. If there was one lesson she taught you that impacts you right now, what is it? Well, um, I think the strongest thing that I learned from her is always, always, always look at tomorrow. You know, a sample. For example, when she was, she was. Um, I think celebrating 97. The next day, she, she told us, uh, I mean, someone asked her, how old are you? She said, I'm 98. <laughs> it was always like that, always thinking about tomorrow, always about the future, never go back, never think about the past. I mean, and obviously, I'm not like that because I'm dealing with the past all the time. But I, some, I think I, I, I caught something from that, that always look forward, forward, forward. I think that was her secret, always go to work every day. You know, she, she came to work uh, until her last day. She came to work and then she didn't feel well and we took her to the hospital. And she, she almost like had no time to be in the hospital, maybe less than 48 hours. Always had to thinking, like, like to be needed and to do something with yourself. So Tamar, you obviously had a relationship with more than a film subject. So what, what did you learn or what did you see that you didn't expect? Uh, when you, after uh, looking back at the project and her. Yeah, yeah I think um, maybe the, the most powerful thing that I took from this experience of making this film is, uh, is, is the message of love. I really felt big love when I was around Miriam and Ben, between them and towards life. Um, I mean, really looking, uh, uh, as Ben said, uh, how to make the most of the next day, of today, of this moment. Um, and um, and uh, for me it was the strongest thing that to know that this is, uh, this is like one of the secrets, secrets to, to live longer and live good. Is really to love, to be patient like Ben was to, grandma, uh, to Miriam, to be tolerant and uh, and uh, for me, um, her character was, um, I, I was inspired uh, to do that film because of that. So, so one more personal thing, and I asked you each this question when I was sitting with you the day after seeing the film because it was so curious to me. How did you happen to be there when the robbery happened? Oh, okay, that's a, that's a very, that's a very um, special moment while making the, the film. Um, Miriam and Ben, sh I mean, was, were really um, um, sharing me everything. It means that uh, Miriam can call me, uh, tomorrow at 9 in the morning I'm going to the hairdresser. W would you like to come and shoot? I mean, she was really opening her life to me and, and letting me know everything on her schedule. So it came from this kind of routine things and, and until this very extreme situation when I got a text message from Ben in the middle of the day, um, my grandmother's uh, apartment was uh, broken into and I was very shocked because I, I didn't know how to react on it because I was not sure uh, um, if it, I mean, if it tells me because it, it thinks it's related with the film or, I mean, uh, should I go there with a camera, without a camera, I was very, very confused. Um, I, I, um, I called uh, my uh, the Barack Lehman, the producer of the film, and consulted with him, and we decided that I should go there with the camera. And as soon as I entered the apartment, uh, I, I was shocked by what I I saw, like the huge mess. And I put the camera down, and what I really felt uh, is to be a friend and uh, not a director in that moment. And I wanted to help Ben arrange the place and hug Miriam, and it was a very powerful moment. And and, and then in, in one of the situations, I, I just I, I moved the bag because the um, police came in and it was on the way. And Miriam saw me doing that, moving the bag. And she said, did you bring the camera? You have to start filming. <laughs> and I was like, OK, she, she's the boss, really. I mean, she, she will tell me what, I mean, 
if she's telling me that, for me it was uh, her uh, wish. I mean, I, I felt in the same moment that she's telling me this is part of my life. If you're documenting my life, this is part of it. And really, I, I took the camera out. I have the courage to do that only because she told me to do that. And it was only when Ben is asking her where are the negatives of the, the Declaration of uh, Independence that I realized, okay, this is a scene that will be in the film. And it's very, very... Uh, very strong moment to, when you're filming for seven years to, to, to know that you are now in a moment that will be in the film. So Ben, from your point of view, you know, that had to be an incredibly uh, difficult moment for you and challenging and sad. Did you even react to the fact that it was being filmed or was Tamar so much a part of your lives at that point that you, yeah. it just happened? Um, Tamar was really like, um, as, as she said, she was like a family, a friend. I was so happy that she came immediately, even though she was in the middle of a shooting day. And um, we trusted her so much all the time with, the, with, the, with everything. I mean, everything was so open. I, I didn't even, I don't remember anything from that day, only the mess of like, wow, did you see? In the, like, all, everything, everything. They took out everything, everything was on the floor, all the rooms. It was a disaster, and then when I asked her about the negatives of the declaration, and I opened the box and I saw it's empty, it was terrifying. And until we found it, I don't even think that I was aware where is Tama, what is she doing. Just the presence of her there gave me so much, uh, like uh, like a, somebody you love is there also with you and sharing with you this moment and trying to deal with uh, my grandma because she was broken and. After that, uh, a few months afterwards, I mean, she didn't recover from that moment uh, afterwards because it was it really, uh, uh, she used to wake up in the middle of the night and go to the door at 3 o'clock in the morning thinking that she heard something. I mean, it really hurt her um, confidence and uh, it was so bad. So one of the, one of the things that struck me, um, seeing the film, visiting the photo house and thinking about that scene, was what your grandfather has captured, had captured, about the history of the State of Israel. Um, I don't know if you caught it in the film, there are a million negatives. A mil think about that number, a million negatives. And if you go to the shop and you open the books, the pictures are all there labeled by, by Rudy. Um, and I think he also built the uh, cabinets that, yeah. the, that they're stored in that you saw. So this might be a tougher question for you, and then I want to open it up to all of you. So as Israelis, is there a message from this film about Israel? Is there something you want this North American audience to hear? Because this is not like any other Israeli film. I don't think that any of us have seen. Yeah. Is, there, is there something you want as the filmmaker? For me, I think the most um, uh, maybe exciting thing was that we premiered the film in uh, Czech, uh, which is where Miriam and uh, Rudy was born, in Prague, in the in International Film Festival. And we got an, uh, a, a mention award from uh, the student jury. And they wrote uh, in their um, uh, statement that it's the first time they see a film about Israel that doesn't uh, uh, um, um, deal with the conflict and they kind of discover that Israeli life could be um, very uh, human and touching and just give them another view of Israel. And, and for me it was uh, showing this internationally, it's very important because uh, we really have lots of film that uh, deals with the conflict and um, very few that doesn't. So, so knowing that it can um, expose people to Israel in a different point of view, it's, Anything from your point of view? Yeah, I mean, I'm dealing with uh, this huge archive in the last three years, my, my goal, and I think that's what I promised to my grandmother, to try to preserve the negatives. It's not digitalized. I mean, only like, uh, let's say, uh, 1,000 from all these uh, million negatives. And um, I think that that's the, the mission I took on, on my shoulders to try to bring it out and maybe find someone to help us uh, like preserve everything and put it in the computer and backing everything up because it's sitting in this wooden 
uh, cabinet and uh, it's so vulnerable and uh, it's their life work but it also tells the story of Israel. I think it's the biggest private archive and, uh, in Israel and that's the problem because it's private it's hard for us to um, get support from uh, the authorities but that's my mission. So does anybody in the audience want to ask either of our guests a question? Yeah, I can't see, so I... Okay. Well, that was a really amazing story, how, how I got into this committee, because I, I've been trying to work on that uh, for two weeks, and uh, nobody let me um, in. And the day, I think the day before, I was talking to my mother and accidentally saying something that I have this like meeting I'm trying to get in, and she asked, asked me, and I always like, laugh about her when she wants to know names. She was like, oh, come on. And she asked, well, who's the responsible of the meeting? And I said, his name, Doran Sapir, who is the, um, how do you speak it? He's the yeah, advisor for the, the, the municipality, and, and um, I said, oh, our, my cousin uh, is a friend of his, let me call her. And I was like, okay. And the next day, apparently my cousin and uh, my mom's cousin were having, uh, were having lunch with him. So in the lunch, the same day, I got this uh, authority to go in, and uh, I was really, I was shocked. That I was there. In, a, in America, we call that Jewish geography. In Israel, we call it protexia. Okay. Yes, exactly. Sandra. But, but, but okay. I just want to mention that uh, Doran Sapir uh, uh, ended up really helping Ben uh, to preserve the shop. So when they, after they uh, demolished the, the building and rebuilt it, they will go back and, and have the same store, which is a, a great success to this uh, struggle. The dialogue, the conversations between Ben and his Safta are so touching and so tender. Can you tell us how much of this was spontaneous and how it how it occurred? Yeah, I, I always say that uh, I don't have. I mean, I could be amazing, maybe screen a script writer, but I could never think about these really amazing jokes of Miriam or Ben. It's really uh, their own text and. Uh, I was just there for really a lot of hours and days with them to, to have uh, captured those moments. But uh, I mean, it's, uh, you have to have a really crazy imagination to think about all those conversations and to script them. Once you started, how long did it actually take once you started in with Ben to do the movie? All together since I met Miriam was seven years. Uh, I met Ben uh, two years afterwards, so that, it's five years of, like, since I started this. We have more than uh, 250 hours of uh, footage. I'm watching. I will take two more questions, and then I, I want to wrap this up, because we know uh, we all want to get to uh, the next event. Margie. So, um, Ben, I was wondering, you know, the largest story of the, the narrative of the state of Israel, but the other story that was very compelling was the tragic um, story of your life with your parents. And so I was wondering what the experience was for you personally to be so open, as you say, and to be sharing this painful story with the challenges that you had had with your grandmother, which you shared in the movie, her perspective, your perspective. And um, I was just wondering what that was like for you. Um, for sure it was re it's really hard and every time I feel exposed a little bit but I trusted Tamar so much because the way that she dealt with us and she always put us in before the film and our feelings before the film you know that we didn't see any of the materials only when the film was finished that's, that's how much we trusted her so and I feel that she didn't try to um, focus the story on what happened between my parents and you know, just to give um, the right perspective about our lives. And uh, so I, I feel kind of safe. And OK, the story is out. People know. But it's not that I'm totally exposed or so, yes. But of course, it's, a, it's, it's not a, an easy mission for me, especially when I'm sitting with audience. So those moments in the film are more harder, yeah. Do you have something in there? Um, I, 
I want to say thank you to Tamara and Ben, and I know that many people here may be wondering what's happening with the film now. How do we bring it to our own community, and how about a photo exhibition? Okay. Um, thank you for the segue, Mr. D Mr. Director. Um, first of all, in the, uh, your registration kits was the information on bringing the film to the community, and Tamar and Barack, the uh, producer, uh, will be setting that up. That's number one. Um, and there are several options there, which I won't take the time with. We've also prepared a viewer's guide to go with the film, as we did for an article of Hope, which was the film we showed two years ago, and many of you uh, brought it into your communities. As far as the exhibition, um, Andy's in the back of the room. Andy, are you there? Can you wave? That's Andy, who's working with Ben on the photo exhibition, um, which they will, depending on the interest, uh, bring here to tour, either with the film, without the film. It's a whole different experience. Uh, you're seeing a piece of it together. Um, the last thing I want to say, so it is all avail it is available, Mark, thank you. Uh, it was not shown anywhere in the States except one um, festival we a, last uh, week. Yeah, we had a premiere in uh, Toronto in Hot Dogs International Film Festival and then right after the, the Toronto Jewish. But actually, this, this is like the first uh, screening uh, for uh, United States. So it's like a, an unofficial premiere, right. especially for the JCCA. And uh, from now on, we are looking forward to, to bring it to the States. Hopefully, I would like to also thank you for sharing this with, with us and opening up your lives. I just wanted to know, I know you have siblings, right? You have, you're one of, I believe, three. I don't know if your mother was the only child. I just was curious. She talked about losing her sister and losing her daughter. Are there other family members? Were they part of her life? Are they part of this yeah. now? Yeah, they are. I have, I have a brother and a sister and an aunt and an uncle, but uh, I mean, they were not a part of the photo house and the shop and our daily life, so they are not in the film, but the relationship with all the family were really good. And I, can I say something? I, I feel like I have to say um, something from Miriam, and you asked me before about a message, and I kept thinking about it, and I remember that she used to say something that Golda Meir told her while she was sitting on this red bench, and I kind of feel that Miriam is here a little bit now with us, so I want to say that she used to tell this, that uh, when, while Golda came to the shop uh, to, to take this series of uh, studio photos, she complained and she told my grandmother, oh, people called me an old lady and I don't like it. And then in Hebrew she said, and I'll translate, but I have first to say it in Hebrew, she said, uh, which means I'm not old, I'm rich with years, or I hope. And that was, I think, my grandma told this so many times, and I think that's maybe the undertone message that I took from her, to be rich with years. That's really nice. And if she was here, physically with us, she would probably with her. <laughs> She would probably say, you know, the destination from Tel Aviv to New Orleans is the same destination from New Orleans to Tel Aviv. So you're all welcome to visit Ben in the shop. Yeah. So three things to close, then I'll call on Gary. One, every one of us was thinking, I'm sure, could we put our grandmother in the snow to do snow angels like that? <laughs> um, the picture I have in my office, actually, Tamar took, and it's the picture on the poster for the film, but it was taken that day. With, with the little hat, I just, I love it. I, I was actually sitting in the shop with the two of them. The second thing I want to say is there are outtakes of the film, which we didn't have time to show, which are absolutely precious, hysterical. It takes your emotions up and down and up and down, and um, you know, I wish we had the time. We didn't. Third, to show you the power of the experience, the next day after we saw the film at the Cinematheque in Tel Aviv, our group, and Carol will bear me out along with those who are in the room. We had free time. I hung out with Ben and Tamar at the shop for hours, and every single member of the group, one on one or one on two, came in because they felt they needed to be there. So I think that the experience of this is not only the experience with the film, but the experience of connecting in this very new way to Israel. And I hope that we've given you uh, just a teeny little flavor of something very special. Gary. Thank you to Tamara and Jack.
Well, thank you very much. I'm sure we all agree that uh, this film touches our heart. And on the third floor is the exhibit of the photos that, that uh, we talked about bringing to your JCC. And they do have prints that you can purchase up there as well. It'll be there through tomorrow. Just a reminder about the 7 p.m. Uh, party at Tipitina's. You need your little blue wristbands. Don't forget to bring those to get in there. Uh, it's an easy walk over there, or there will be shuttle buses leaving out of the second door on this floor. Tomorrow morning, we begin with the size of city at 8 a.m. At 9.15, we'll share our findings on several initiatives, and you can choose the one you're most interested in. And we have our final plenary at 11 a.m. tomorrow morning with Chris Brogan, the social media expert on how to retool your communications at your JCC. Have a great evening. We we'll look forward to seeing you at Tipitina's, and enjoy it. Thank you.